Hey everyone, and welcome to today's tech tip. Um, for today, I thought we would cover one of maybe the lesser known options in the floor module, and that's namely kind of editing your end conditions. Um, so anyone who's used the floor module before knows that our floors, in this case, works a little differently than the walls, and they're actually defined by these boundary lines and boundary nodes. Um, so these boundary lines, although they just look like regular Revit model lines, they actually do have their own set of properties, and you can actually use them to modify the end conditions on your floor panel. So you can do them a number of which ways. You can grab the actual line itself, and then in the panel, you'll notice there's going to be an option here to edit the end condition. Um, so you can run this way. There's also the separate command to run any side tracks, so any end conditions that are parallel with your joists. Um, but what you could also do too, which is usually what I veer to since it's simpler, you grab your line, you hit the properties button, and then that opens up your specific end conditions for this side of the floor panel. So by default, it's going to use whatever you have in your floor's properties, of course. So it'll use your same track settings that you have. Um, and you can still control very much the track and what type of member gets placed in the properties and save it as a template. This is just, I find a handy little option if maybe one particular panel changes, you want to go instance by instance and you don't really have to go into the panel's properties. Um, you can grab the line, click it, and then the first option that you have is to customize it. So this is where you can kind of set up um, if you want maybe double members at this particular end condition, you can even turn it off at this point. Um, if you have two floor panels that are butted up against each other, one of those end conditions could always be turned off. But either than that, you have the exact same options that you would otherwise have in the panel's properties. The difference is just that it's applying to this one singular line. So exact same options for alignment, for changing the member configurations. In this case, just to make things simpler, I'm going to turn them off completely. So I'm going to remove my rim track here. And then I just have to say, okay, give my floor a regen. And then I should see that rim track disappear. There we go. So it removed my rim track on this side altogether. And I have kind of an open end condition for this side of the panel. So the other thing you've probably noticed at this point is that I do have a bearing beam um, running underneath my joists. And in that end condition, if we go back again, just clicking the line, going into the properties, you'll notice here that there are actually two options for balloon and platform framing. So if you go into any one of these options, either the balloon or the platform, depending on what you need, um, you'll see here that there's an option for alignments. So it actually picks up that I have a bearing beam underneath my floor and you can click the show button. It finds the ID of the element and it highlights it for you in the Revit model. So you know exactly what your reference is. But regardless, if I want to use, let's say, the balloon option. I have different options here to align my joists to either the center of the beam, the near side, or the far side. So it's going to basically, if I choose, let's say, to align to the far side of the beam, again, I'm just going to need to give my panel a regen to see that take shape. Even though my floor object, my physical floor stops at the midpoint. Because it's using the beam now as a reference, it's just going to align to the furthest point so I can get that desired framing. Okay. 
So this is a handy option if you want to modify your end conditions. Um, it also works on the wood side as well, even though I'm in light gauge. If this was top plates from another wall panel below it, you could still use your end conditions to modify the floor. So it's definitely a handy little option that you guys can go ahead and use to modify the end conditions for your floor panel.